Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Israeli forces destroy Palestinian village for 198th time. Demand for inquiry into death of indigenous teen in Australia. Colombia legalizes abortion up to 24 weeks. And Malian parliament passes democratic transition plan. In our first story, Israeli forces demolish the Palestinian village of Al Arakib for the 198th time. The village is located in Al Nakab or the Negev Desert and is inhabited by 22 Bedouin families. Local reports state that the village was raided early on Tuesday and all tents and tin shelters were removed. According to the Andalou Agency, the village was first destroyed in July 2010. Demolitions have continued for over a decade since then, with around 14 instances documented in 2021 alone. Palestinian families have stated that they have owned the land since the Ottoman period. Al Arakib is among 35 villages in the Nakab deemed unrecognized by Israel. The nearly 100,000 Palestinians who live in these areas are under constant threat of attacks and demolitions. Israel refuses to connect a majority of these villages to electricity and water grids. They also lack access to other basic necessities like a sewage system or proper roads. The Palestinians in Al Nakab today are descendants of those who remained during the 1948 Nakba. Israel has repeatedly also tried to remove Palestinians from their villages to planned townships. Activists have stated that this amounts to forcible transfer, which is a war crime. Meanwhile, Israel has invested billions to expand Jewish settlements in the area. Palestinians have been resisting land theft and dispossession in Al Nakab, including the recent supposed forestation plan of the Jewish National Fund. Now we take a look at concerns that have grown surrounding the death of a 16-year-old indigenous boy in Australia. Jai Wright was heavily injured after his trail bike crash with an unmarked police vehicle on February 19th. He died in a hospital on Sunday. His father, Lachlan Wright, has now said that an independent inquiry is needed. He has said that the police has given the family incons inconsistent information. In the first version, police claimed that the police car had turned in front of Jai, causing the crash. A police statement claimed that officers had noticed two suspected stolen vehicles, including a trail bike, early on Saturday. However, later that day, Wright's family were told that there were no pursuit and that Jai lost control of his bike and ran into a parked police car. The account will determine if Jai's case is investigated as a custodial death. The inconsistencies have sparked outrage with protests planned in different cities to demand accountability. Researchers have also pointed out that the police pursuit protocols remain largely secret and away from public scrutiny. Australia has also witnessed sustained protests against indigenous deaths in custody or by the police. Parallels have been drawn between Jai's case and the 2004 death of indigenous teenager TJ Hickey. Since the 1991 Royal Commission report, over 500 deaths have been reported in custody of Aboriginal people. In our next story, the Constitutional Court of Colombia has legalized abortion until the 24th week of pregnancy. The nine-judge tribunal voted five against four to issue the landmark ruling on February 21st. The decision follows recent rulings in Mexico, Argentina, and to some extent Ecuador, which have expanded access to abortions. Rights groups estimate that up to 400,000 abortions are performed in Colombia each year. However, only 10% are carried out legally. Prior to Monday's ruling, the procedure was only allowed in cases of life-threatening fetal malformations, rape, incest, or non-consensual artificial insemination. Monday's ruling emerged from a 2020 lawsuit filed by a coalition of over 90 rights groups called Causa Justa. They demanded that abortion be removed from Colombia's penal code. Between 2006 and mid-2019, at least 350 women are, were convicted or sanctioned for abortions. Among them were at least 20 girls under the age of 80. 
the case witnessed several delays in the following year. Cosa Justa estimated that over 45,000 people have been forced to undergo unsafe abortions during this time. The Constitutional Court's decision has been welcomed as a major victory in the fight for reproductive rights and justice. Celebrations were also held outside the chamber's building in Bogota on Monday. And finally, Mali's interim parliament has approved a plan which will allow the transitional government to rule for up to five years. 120 out of the military-dominated legislature's 121 members voted to adopt the bill on February 21st. It also states that the country's current interim president cannot contest in the future democratic elections. However, the text does not mention junta leader and acting president Colonel Asimi Goida by name. It has also not set a specific date for the election. The bill follows a month after the regional bloc ECOWAS imposed sweeping sanctions and border closures on Mali. Member states cited the junta's failure to stick to the previously agreed election schedule. Shortly after the first coup in 2020, the junta had promised to hold elections in February 2022. However, the military proposed to extend the transition period by six months to up to five years in December. The announcement of sanctions led to mass protests in Mali over worsening economic crisis and the COVID-19 pandemic. The move was also condemned as part of France's neocolonial interference in the country. Mali was also suspended from all institutions under the Regional Monetary Authority, UEMOA. Mali does not have access to financial markets and it has diluted an over $93 million in loan payments since January. The junta has now filed a case in the UEMOA Court of Justice seeking a repeal and suspension of the sanctions. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching. Thank you.